Hello, everyone. Since this is either a highlight, a standalone book, or the first episode in a series, I'm jumping in to remind you what the rules are for this podcast. First rule is no real people stories. That means that any details from our own lives are merely anecdotal. We do not read books about real people, and we are not reading historical fiction. The second rule is that we are basing our analyses off of how the author treats characters and what they put them through. We are not judging the accuracy of the trauma, the accuracy of any actual conditions that may be portrayed, nor the authenticity of a character's reaction to that trauma or that particular condition. This podcast is for entertainment purposes only. The hosts are not trained professionals, and their opinions come solely from personal experience. In this episode, we discuss fictional depictions of trauma and violence that may not be suitable for all audiences. Please take care of yourselves. Specific content warnings for each episode can be found in the show notes. Events in the media are discussed in approximate order of escalation. This episode contains spoilers. I'm Nicole. And I'm Robin. And this episode on Books That Burn, we are discussing Hench by Natalie Zena Walshots from the publisher. Here we have the description. Anna does boring things for terrible people because even criminals need office help and she needs a job. Working for a monster lurking beneath the surface of the world isn't glamorous, but is it really worse than working for an oil conglomerate or an insurance company in this economy? As a temp, she's just a cog in the machine, but when she finally gets a promising assignment, everything goes very wrong, and an encounter with the so-called hero leaves her badly injured. And, to her horror, compared to the other bodies strewn about, she's the lucky one. So, of course, then she gets laid off. With no money and no mobility, with only her anger and internet research acumen, she discovers her suffering at the hands of a hero is far from unique. When people start listening to the story that her data tells, she realizes she might not be as powerless as she thinks. Because the key to everything is data, knowing how to collate it, how to manipulate it, and how to weaponize it. By tallying up the human cost these caped forces of nature wreak upon the world, she discovers that the line between good and evil is mostly marketing. And with social media and viral videos, she can control that appearance. It's not too long before she's employed once more, this time by one of the worst villains on Earth. As she becomes an increasingly valuable lieutenant, she might just save the world. A sharp, witty modern debut, Hench explores the individual cost of justice through a fascinating mix of millennial office politics, heroism rec- measured through data science, body horror, and a profound misunderstanding of quantum mechanics. All right. Uh, so they're definitely not wrong about the millennial office politics. Uh, <laughs> it's it's hilarious. Um, it Yeah, anyway... Like, that's not what this podcast is about. But I'm like, yeah, no, that's sure. Sure description. Yeah, you're right. You're right that that's a thing. Um, Yeah, so we're here to talk about the trauma in Hench. Um, For our first topic, we want to real quick. Normally, we try to yeah. make escalation align with how spoilery something is. Yeah. We aren't really able to do that here. This is an end of book spoiler. If you would like to not have that spoiled, then please feel free to jump to whatever section you need to, even if that's straight to the wrap up. Um, in the sections after this one, we shouldn't need to reference this at all. And so those shouldn't have this end book spoiler. I, I I want to um, note but because body horror is a different end book spoiler. I I want to note because that can be important for people weighing whether or not they care about a spoiler. This is mm-hmm. not a spoiler that is some kind of twist that like mm. changes a reread. No, for it does you. not. Uh, I I just mentioned that because that's how I gauge whether or not I care about spoilers. If oh, it, absolutely. If it changes the the book on a second read through, then I care. If it doesn't, then yeah, whatever. 
Yeah. So this is not one of those. And I'll mention this on like the next section, because in case anyone missed this anyone misses this explanation. But mm-hmm. yeah, neither of sections of our topics one and two, they're both end of book reveals slash events, but they don't reframe they're not major twists. They don't reframe yeah. what you've already read. Yeah, so there's a particular murder in someone's backstory that influenced what they're doing now. And we're going to talk about that murder. So here's your last chance to skip. All right, everybody who's still here, uh, thank you so <laughs> much for staying. And we're going to talk about how Entropy was murdered. Uh, and Entropy is the name of um, okay. Leviathan's mentor. Mother. Literal mother? I thought so. I thought it was mentor. I thought it was that her child was born and then is part of this thing. You might be right. Um, I'll, I'll have to check that later and let you know. <laughs> I'm fairly yeah. that was That was my reading of it, is that, that he is her literal child and she couldn't get him out because that was kind of the whole point because he's the only one of her like protege that is that she held on to when she tried to leave yeah i thought it was because of how much they experimented on him and what they did to him in a way that since there aren't other leviathans that we know of running around um it seemed like the really fucked up thing that they did to him was just to him um now, that would be a reveal that would change how you think of the book, so we are not going to spoil that in here. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I I will double check and <laughs> let you know after, because... Yeah. Whether or not she's literally his mom, she is as important of a figure to him, um, whether or not they're related by blood. Um, yeah, so... She... She was murdered, and she was murdered by someone who, at the time, um, Leviathan was very good friends with, so much so that after he found out she was dead, she went to her murderer to try and get help and figure out who had killed her. Okay, Um, so, Robin? Yeah? I feel like we're tiptoeing. We need to not tiptoe. We need to actually talk about the topic. Okay. Okay. Entropy is killed by Super Collider. Mm -hmm. And Entropy is killed by Super Collider when he... He's not intentionally, like, theoretically, as far as we can tell from his version of events. He's not intentionally trying to kill her. Um, What happens is he is jumping across buildings and he's jumping high enough in the atmosphere that she starts, like, icing over, freezing over, which makes his jumping kind of interesting to me, honestly. Um... And she's getting to the point where there's, there's there isn't enough oxygen for her, and she can't really like function anymore. And then he tries to scare her by like, what fake dropping her or something like that. And then she actually falls and dies, hits the ground I, and dies. I think if we're going to say that level of detail on it, which is absolutely fine, well, we um, need to talk about I it. Like it, we can't no, sure. we can't talk about it without the detail. Like there isn't no, anything to say otherwise. Hang on, stop that. I had. A second half of the thought, which was, okay. I think it's important to note that that version of the story is from a different character mm, yeah. that he had told it to. And now that because he, he, that character related as if Super Collider flew, because it is not common knowledge that he mm. can't fly, I think all of that was a lie. And he just... <laughs> put through her to the ground on purpose oh yeah i but cannot we, prove this right but that's the what i was story, gonna say his version of the story is not his version of the story involves a thing his powers can't do yeah but that 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 doesn't that doesn't mean that it's okay those are two different I'm, things they're not really well, they're not necessarily related i'm he just can, saying he can be lying twice or just once it doesn't really like sure just for me my interpretation is it was not an accident he killed her right and then tried to cover it up especially when his cover story involves a thing he can't yeah do. but his but cover regardless. story involves a, a lie that is true about every time he does anything so like that's not yeah yeah but it, the his version of events that we we do get third party but it, it's his version of events yeah. says that it's an accident and yeah. it, it's kind of a 
it's kind of a weird reveal, honestly, as far as like reader trauma goes, because we don't know this character. And we don't really know like pretty much anything about her. The only people in this scenario that we have we know anything about <laughs> really mm-hmm. are Super Collider, the perpetrator, and Leviathan, the character who is left behind. And that's it. We get yeah. we get like brief tiny glimpses, but not really like <laughs> You know, like, like shadow on the wall glimpses of Leviathan's trauma, but we we don't get any actual, like, real understanding of any of that. We get a we get a story about why she about how she died, and we know that Leviathan has her mask, and that's it. Yep, it's very almost it's not sterile, but it feels like it could have been, if that makes sense. Also, the like the official story, like. We have the version of probably close to what actually happened, wherein Super Collider killed her either accidentally or on purpose. But the official, official story, I think it was a heart attack. It was a heart attack, right. And Leviathan, like, she had told him, if I disappear, tell you I don't like you, stop talking to you, die, whatever, it wasn't me, they did it. Yeah. Yeah, Which there's is... a, there's a whole background where she was trying to get out of a situation and like he was mm-hmm. still at that yeah. Um yeah. so he he knows or is fairly certain that this was not not a real heart attack. I think outside of a literal murder mystery, I don't think we often uh are talking about like a murder that was covered up just you know on our podcast particularly. Um I don't I'm trying to recollect. I don't think we often have that kind of a dynamic which is interesting, because, mm-hmm. yeah, because, like, I mean, you may be noting, you're like, oh, no, as an uh, audience member, you're like, oh, no, murder's topic one. What's the rest of the show going to go to? Uh, very scary places. <laughs> 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 um, but this, the way this happened and the way it's portrayed in the book, we wouldn't have had to pick something we w- we don't have to have a worse kind of death be the escalation from this because right. of how much in the background and like deeply important this is but we're not hearing it from um we're not hearing it from the person who killed her we're not hearing it from right. her like leviathan doesn't tell this story and so there's a lot of like distancing and mm. like trying uh, the people telling this aren't the ones who are most immediately affected by it cuz like right. doc was there he was her coworker I, I mean yeah he in an emotionally yeah. intense job he he's the, he's the parallel to her in another like hero yeah. kick team um yes. but yeah, he he's he's like one step removed. <laughs> but he's still he's still close enough to be like not implicated but like a, a a key to someone trying to figure out what happened to her, but like he's not directly involved, so to speak. He is, I think. Yeah, he's the one super collider went to after it happened. Right, cuz he Whether knew he would was... know. <laughs> but right. yeah. And that's about we it. don't know if super collider went to him for comfort or to secure his story of what happened so mm-hmm. that it wasn't pinned as a murder. We, right. we don't know. Um, you'll notice we've decided to call this murder, <laughs> even though both of the well, official I mean, stories involve an accident. Ac- I, accidental manslaughter or intentional manslaughter is still manslaughter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Su- Super Collider is still at fault. Oh, absolutely. Either no, I, I, I personally... Do not believe it was an accident. But, you know, read the, read the book. Let us know what you think. Whether, and, you know, it was maybe his first one. Um, which mm. makes it harder. That seems, that seems questionable. That's why I said maybe. First intent. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. So, from an, from an audience perspective, what is important here? We should We should talk about that. Yeah. So this is kind of like a reveal a little bit of why a different character is 
how he is, but it's not not in some like deep angsty way. Right. Just like needing to know the players involved and also narratively what this shows is yet another example of people who work personally with Super Collider, even that far back, knowing how bad he was. I think that's one of the things that's important from this, since the whole course of the book is about how the heroes are actually as objectively terrible for the planet as a natural disaster. Um, I, I think one of the things that this does is it shows that it, like, isn't this sudden thing, and there is a way in which of the heroes Super Collider has at these opportunities opted to be a weirdly uniquely terrible person, and that right. it makes and also the theme of the a thing that his mentor had told him a long time ago, which is like you make your own villains <laughs> um so like. I think given that that had been established earlier, finding out how Super Collider's actions set up Leviathan to be his opposite, I think that was, like, thematically important. Um, right. Even if it isn't as important from the exact angle our podcast takes. I think that's why yeah. it's in the book. Yeah, that's why, that's why I was asking about the angle that we take. What is what is the important thing here? Um, if you have a specific thing, say it. Yeah, I, I. If you were trying to hope I would read your mind, that I'm sorry, my telepathy no, isn't working today. <laughs> no, no, no. I I wasn't hoping you would read my mind. I just. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The the so the the things that we should talk about with this trauma and then be done with the topic. Yeah. This is a very far removed from like our reader experience, and we explicitly are being told this through a narrator. And it's a little bit far removed from the narrator's experience as well. And so as far as like trauma goes, and as far as like our experience of it goes, it's very like, it's like, it's like you hear about something that happened to somebody else and it happened to their friend and you kind of know the person, but like, there's no actual connection to you. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not like a huge, like, um trying to think of the it's not a driving narrative force either it's just kind of a thing that you end up finding out as like a key to get from point c to point d in a, in a different narrative arc um and so it's just it's not sterile it's very emotional but it's not connected to the people we are following and it wasn't the point of the conversation so it has this it has this interest that too yeah that, that's what i'm saying like it's almost an accident that we find out about it yeah, so it has this interesting combination of, like, we were here to find out a different thing, which is, like, way more emotionally resident at that moment. Right. And then we just, we stumble onto this thing and it's like, ooh, that must have hurt for you. <laughs> yeah. Almost. <laughs> yeah. And so it's, it's this thing where it's like, okay, uh, we'll maybe talk about that later maybe never because there's no way anna's gonna ask him about that oh yeah absolutely not like he no. may volunteer it at some point i could maybe. see that being like a development in the future but probably not i think by the time he'd be okay talking about it he wouldn't need to talk about it anymore right exactly <laughs> you're right yeah um and since she knows about it like and anyway th that speculation beyond the end of the book um on to our second topic which is body horror all right this is an end of book event uh, it is not the kind of spoiler that reshapes how you think about the rest of the book but knowing that this is going to happen to this character might change how you view them as a threat. I don't know. Uh, but end of book spoiler, dealing with a particular character. Here's your time to duck out if you don't want that spoiled. Um, also, real okay. quick, real quick. Yes. We are going to probably by necessity make some very gross descriptions. 
if yeah if descriptions of i'm just gonna tldr without making it super graphic Mm -hmm. limbs inverting mucus blood tissue functions body contortions by being broken or the idea of somebody being like in most other contexts ground into like a singular blob if any of those are too much for you first don't read the descriptions in the book also skip our topic (laughs) yep straight up this is not going to be one that we can like not trigger the thing by talking about the thing yeah it it would be very difficult for us to discuss this one. We're not going to do it gratuitously, but... No, but I, I don't think we could even like talk about we it need to say in a way that nothing. is helpful without yeah. get del- delving into the territory. Yeah. So here's where my brain not forming mental images of things I haven't seen before was great. <laughs> um, but my... My neat mental shortcut for this is it's like this person got put in a trash compactor. Um but isn't dead. Uh yeah. yeah. So this I think in most other books this would have been torture porn because it is a comeuppance for an extremely odious character <laughs> whose very existence causes people pain because of how he conducts his life. Yeah. But there are details um like that he is vaguely oozing unknown body fluids that include but are not limited to saliva and blood <laughs> um while he's in this compacted state. Um, Mm -hmm. it is, while I'm sure there are people for whom slime is sexy, clearly that is not meant to be the goal by the narrative. Oh, that, y'all, this is not just slime. This is like, oh, no, slime is is gelatinous body fluid. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Like, it, 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 I'm just saying, I'm not kink shaming. The book isn't worried about that. It's not trying (laughs) to have it be. This is not about kink shame. (laughs) (laughs) No, I'm just saying, the book is portraying this as gross and uncomfortable yeah our our perpetrator character and also our main point of view character are both just like grossed out by the thing that they have done this is not yeah. a thing that they are li- are enjoying or that we are supposed to enjoy this is no. just gross and sad that it had to come to this but also mostly gross yeah and they tried so much to get him to have them him they started with his leg and said, please stop now, just stop, and this can be over. And he kept trying to attack them, and this, so he was bent and contorted into this mm-hmm. mass. And it is, um, it is worth noting, this is not an example of a character dying by limbs snapping. This character is canonically essentially indestructible so they are just breaking him and recontorting him but he's still alive and that's kind of the whole point yep yeah although and i will say them having to dig his thumb out was very which is kind of yeah. entertaining as a concept take his hand out for the scan oh and they needed his palm flat but he crushes somebody yeah because he got his arm they freed his arm it just this is like thing. while while he is this awful body horror mass of flesh, he still manages to injure somebody, um, <laughs> which is dedication. Um, yeah. So the 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 narrative goes out of its way to emphasize how heavy he is, how because he's like a whole human. Yeah. Who is now in an, a suboptimal shape? Who is also like canonically dense, like, like yeah, atomically, yeah, like muscle mass dense, and possibly in like a has powers kind of a way. Not sure, right? Um, yeah, and so he's just contorted into this mass, and still like with his suit, and they're like trying to use the cloth as handholds, and the perspective is from the person who 
I don't remember if she, I don't know if she, she didn't directly order this to happen because she didn't know that the other person was able to do this to him with her powers. Um, but then once he's in this round state, um, she's like directing what they're going to do with him and like having people lift him and move him and turn him and get certain bits of his anatomy free so that they can be used on whatever the scanner is to get them into the next locked zone. Um, and every bit of it, narratively speaking, I don't know, this feels like the don't you dare think that the protagonists in these books are heroes. They are villains. Um, <laughs> well, to me, that feels like the point of this. Mm-hmm. Because I, I, so the thing is, if the heroes were doing this, they would at least have to have a conversation about how they were going to justify it in, like, you know, general tropes in a superhero thing. Well, heroes will still do awful things, but they'll have, like, a conversation about how there was no other way. I mean, but they had that conversation. I guess, yeah. But and also, like, hero and villain is a category set in this universe. Like, it's not. That's true. It's 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 not a a moral <laughs> archetype. It's a it's a categorical archetype, and it that's limits true because the heroes, yeah, the heroes are whoever will go along with this particular system, and the villains are everybody exactly. who doesn't. Yeah, but they still have to have both sides of the system in order for it to happen. I guess that's true. It just. They try to have there be another way, but then once there just isn't another way, one. yeah, yeah, they completely like her describing repeatedly and consistently how unpleasant it is, and then like when she briefly has to um be part of carrying him, um, Anna, uh, the main character is kind of like, well, I'm glad I didn't have to carry him the whole time. Well, that's mm-hmm. also because like she's. She has I mean, to use a cane. Like yeah, she, she already has, has some. She has most, mobility issues already. Most of the book, she has one and a half working legs. <laughs> like yeah, like she her has mobility carrying issues. the other she, creature is not like the best course of action if they're gonna get all the way there without injury. Yeah, it, it it's not like she should have been doing her fair share earlier or no, something. No, 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 no. Like there, there isn't, there isn't any of that. Um, like physically, she couldn't have. Um. But I I did appreciate that briefly she <laughs> is part of carrying yeah, him. Yeah, absolutely. In order to kind of convey more of what the previous people who were carrying him have been going through. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Like, I... The, the big takeaway with this one, I just want to... If you're reading it and you are not prepared for gross mental images and descriptions and just like contorted descriptions descriptions of bones breaking but they can't break because he's he's a he's and he's all enduring he's just this impervious like creature like that's what this is it's just visceral it goes on for like 10 pages something like that it's a while it's a while like and he is and carrying him and his body is kind of almost the focus for all of those pages like it's just this very it's this very visceral it's this very like enduring scene um and it's plot relevant like but you but like honestly if this is one of those things where if you want the rest of the book and you want to skip that like one part you can kind of skip most of it and it's okay yeah there really isn't any like cutaways to anybody else there isn't anything else going on it's just this thing happening yeah and it yeah, it just has this. It's just the sh- the the gross, gross logistics of making this happen and going through all the elevators and barriers mm-hmm. and things. And they're not talking about really anything else. They're not chatting. They're just having to haul him. Yeah, through this complicated space. On to our third topic, which is medical trauma. 
for our main character. And this is a thing that is generally spoiled just by the description of the book for one of the incidents. Mm -hmm. And then there's a second incident that happens like mid to like about halfway to slightly later in the book. Um, So I want to talk about the one that's almost as soon as the book begins and then talk about the other one just so if anyone wants to ride with us until it's a major spoiler they can (laughs) yeah so very early on anna's leg is shattered in a really bad compound fracture when super collider just moves her while (laughs) he is uh being a hero and this incident and the way he behaved when it happened um like cops with him in a very bad disguise came to find (laughs) out what had happened to her in the incident and she said oh i know exactly what happened he hurt me and this is what happened and they're like oh you're confused there's no way and then it just there's there's all this stuff in the book about the way that the systems support him um which i think is really well done but the the important thing is that makes her very angry and she has a whole lot of time to spend recovering and be this is the inciting incident where she begins to f- put together based on data um the fact in this world that superheroes are as bad as natural disasters and sh- their harm should be quantified In the ways that the harms from natural disasters are quantified, which is with, like, how many years of life were um, either completely taken or substantially negatively altered because of what happened. Yeah, which is, like, this really, really cool thing in the book. Uh, But as part of that, there's a lot of emphasis on um, not necessarily the actual moment itself because it happened in an instant right like the really slow process of recovery and also how boring waiting for your body to heal (laughs) is i i Um, honestly love that because we we don't get a fast forward to okay i'm better now after weeks in the hospital mm -hmm. xyz oh nicole it's even worse There's a couple of times, like, not necessarily during this, but especially during, like, later recoveries from things, where we do skip a month at a time, and they're still not done recovering. Right. Because it is that long and that boring. It's very good. It's very realistic. (laughs) Yeah. Um, (laughs) And also, just from, like, the, like dealing with like a disability in the aftermath of suddenly finding oneself disabled um i i really like how she like gets a cane and you know because she is working for a villain the cane (laughs) gets gadgets and oh my god i i love her just i I love her just i have a cane and now i am more dramatic (laughs) like yeah (laughs) Yeah, like the cool opportunities that anyone not necessarily a hench to a (laughs) villain would have for like getting a cane they like that looks good and using it to just uh, have swagger. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's it's so good. I'm I'm a huge fan of her cane. I'm a huge fan of um, the the ways that it's used. (laughs) Mm hmm. Yeah. And also, this isn't like directly the medical trauma, but I did want to touch on that. Um, the this combines with, um, the kind of what ends up being kind of a toxic friendship in the book. Yeah. Um, which is exacerbated by her at first accepting her friend's offer of a couch to be on and then losing her apartment and not being able to leave. And the way that that um, kind of wrecks their dynamic, like it 
<sighs> because she was already in this like financially precarious state right. as a hench. This then, like, the way that this sudden medical emergency, through truly no fault of her own, and even if it were her fault, that is not commensurate to the level of damage that this caused in her life. Right. The book does make this point later that, like, even if even if she had done something to deserve it, she didn't deserve this. And if we think she should deserve this, there's a problem. Um, it, uh, yeah, just the way that society is or isn't set up yeah. to deal with this happening to her, um, and how they think about her because it happened to her in this world of superheroes and um, villains and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's a major thing. In the book. I don't know what... Before we move on to the, the brain thing, if there was anything else you wanted to mention. Um, I mean, that's the... So as far as, like, how we are reading the trauma, it, it goes on for a long time. It's clearly affecting the character. But we are... It's one of those things where you're, like, aware of it happening, but it's not described extremely viscerally. Relatively speaking, it's not, like... It's not in your face. It's not something that's going to hopefully cause people to have like sympathy, <laughs> pain, sensations, if that's a thing that happens to you. Um, you know, it's it's very, <clears throat> it's very like this happened and here's how I'm dealing with it. And oh, cool, eye patch. Not, oh no, my life. <laughs> oh, the eye patch is later. The eye patch is thing. later. You know, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I have a cane. Look at my cool cane and less of like, ow, 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 ow. Which could yeah. have been the story, honestly. Yeah. Oh, there's there's much more about the cane. I think narratively, kind of as a proxy mm. for rather than talking about her leg, it's it's a if you need a continual reminder throughout the book that she is still living with the after effects <laughs> of this event and the trauma hasn't gone away. I am yeah. very happy that the book went with mentions of her cane and how she is using it. Yes. Rather than mentions of continued pain if there is one because it just i think it would have made it a harder book to read yes i d Correct. it would have been a different book it wouldn't have been a bad book but it would have been a different one um and i like uh i like what this did mm -hmm. with that emphasis especially when there's so much time spent talking about people who had um, worse effects up to and including <laughs> death yeah. from an it's from very similar incidents to what happened to her. I think maybe if the entire book had just been about her recovering with her leg, like then mm. it would have made more sense to talk about that yeah. pain. But there's a there's I mean, hey, like just from our previous topic with the body horror like there's already a lot of pain to go around in this book so i appreciated the emphasis yeah yeah and there's a second incident of medical trauma which uh is so all right so this is now a mid to late book spoiler skip to the wrap up if you don't want to know a thing that is done in retaliation to her um, so Super Collider doesn't like that she's still messing with him, that she's trying to portray him as anything, uh, less than a totally awesome positive force for the world. And also, they have been messing with his life. Yeah. Because he's terrible for the world, and they're trying to make it harder for him to keep doing that. And Anna get is kidnapped and they're setting up to do something that is more nuanced than a lobotomy but is seems like it would have similarly devastating effects on her and the the amount that happened before she was rescued meant that she lost sight in one eye to some 
degree. I don't know if it was completely. It was enough that some repair ended up being needed. And then also, she had brain trauma similar to a concussion. I believe that was the same incident. If it wasn't, she separately has something similar. No, it was definitely this. Trauma similar to and possibly specifically including a concussion. And uh, I've had one. They suck. Uh, And I don't know, just this one, this. For this, they dwell, the narrative dwells a lot more on particular aspects of the recovery um, than it did for her leg. Partly because the brain stuff takes way longer to heal. And also because unlike when her leg was shattered, she has more things that she's trying to do and more things that the recovery process is stopping her from getting back to. Whereas with her leg, she just mostly had to wait. Right. But then now, when this second thing happens, she has the, narratively, she has the weight of every day that she's not back to work. Super Collider is still ruining lives. And she could be doing something about it. And that's a sense that she didn't have the first time. And I think that changes the way this trauma feels in the narrative. Right. Hey. Oh, hey, Jeff. What's going on, guys? Oh, you know, talking about Superman. Oh, cool. I could talk about Superman. I could talk some more about Superman. We know. I'll bet a few people would want to get in on this. I'm down. You know it. That sounds like fun. I'll do it. Cool. Let's do it. We can call the show Men of Steel. And you can find it at certainpov.com. Or wherever you get your podcasts. Yay. On to the wrap-up and ratings for Hench. Uh, For our first topic, which is murder, uh, what is the gratuity rating? Mm. I mean, it's backstory. Do you think it, it, like, it literally is. Do you think it rates more than that? Right. Um, I think it's not a very visceral description, but it's enough of a description to maybe make it mod. It's either mild or moderate, I think. I think I would say mild. Um, especially, like, it's very vague. And it's even a... yeah. It's a, this is probably what happened. It's possible that what actually happened is worse, but we don't actually know. um, Right. Kind of a thing. Now, if we had been discussing grief, we'd have a very different rating. But since we're discussing (laughs) just like the actual death itself. Right, right, right. I do think backstory and mild uh, would be appropriate. All right. Body horror. This is severe. And only the fact that we are meant to take no pleasure in this (laughs) at all, specifically so. That is really the only thing that keeps us from being trauma porn. Um, Or sorry, torture porn, yeah. (laughs) Trauma Um, porn. I mean, also that. Also that, yeah. Yeah, the only thing that keeps us from being torture porn is that the people inflicting this truly are taking zero joy in it and are not happy that they didn't see a way to do something other than this if you just heard a cat toy rattle in the background uh, haku just rolled a very noisy ball across the floor just didn't heads up hopefully i'll get it it'll get edited out but still uh the medical trauma moderate mild moderate uh- <sighs> i think this is severe because it discusses a comb it has enough uh, dang it might be moderate hmm i see thinking about both major incidents okay like, yeah no it might it might actually be moderate because it does focus way more on the ancillary annoyances of recovery right. than it does with the actual 
specific traumatic thing that happened to her body. And also, our character continually kind of just blacks out when things get too bad. Like, they're not conscious and and screaming. Like, that's just not a thing. Yeah. Yeah. And even when she is awake, she's under some kind of anesthesia, some kind of, like, numbing agent. um, Right. For the bits where she's awake. Yeah. So anesthesia would mean she's out. Some kind of pain things um okay no i do actually wow this it did manage to be moderate i do concur but i i feel a bit shocked (laughs) um that 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 scene that does seem right okay integral interchangeable or irrelevant um i really think the murder is interchangeable yeah, something had to happen. Yeah, but- we needed a crux for other thingies that have contributed to modern day stuff. But like, yeah. But it's more important that someone made decisions after this right. event happened. Right, 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 exactly. And we just needed something to prompt him to make those decisions. And the body horror. Okay, the body horror, I think, is irrelevant. No, I, I think it maybe is interchangeable. Like we had to okay, so here's here's the thing. The character needed to be incapacitated. Character needed to be incapacitated. We t- didn't need them to be our key into the place. Right. Um, that's where it you right. didn't need I, I, that. it's not irrelevant because this is this character is kind of a main focus they're the main antagonist of our plot. They had to be taken out somehow. Something had right. to happen, and that thing is more likely to be trauma induced than anything else. That's they're they're not they're not going to quietly go sit themselves in a room and say okay have fun like that's not a thing, um, so it it, it is at the very least interchangeable. It's not irrelevant. I can't I can't agree with that one, um, but I don't I don't okay. think it's integral. Okay, you have talked me up to interchangeable. Um, then the medical trauma is integral to the plot. Yes. The min the first incident at mi- is integral to the first half of the book, and the second incident, I do think, is integral to the rest of the book. Mm-hmm. Um, like the second half would have happened so differently as to be a different story without that or some something so similar as to not. I mean, but, fact- it, but she didn't have to get hurt. Is the thing uh, okay? But the first and it's a, the first one is integral. The second no. one might be inter. You don't. You think I, the second one's irrelevant? I no. I think the first one. I think she could have just been fired and like, like blackballed from the incident. Maybe like that's a thing. She didn't have well, to be hurt. But- I I think the fact that it pushes her onto something that is like the guiding force in the book, which is like totaling up the damage in a financial oh, no, that's a good a point. life sense. Like that's a good point. She actually, wouldn't yeah. have cared about it like that if she hadn't been hurt and been hurt enough to mean that she had these hours to fill. Yeah. Okay. That, that's a good point. Obsession. Actually, I'm okay with that. I, I I'm okay with either with integral. Yeah. Yeah. And I I do think it's very important for the second half of the book that she was hurt in a way that required rescue. Um, we could argue more. She about could have the just been imprisoned. Being interchangeable. She could have just been imprisoned. M- like, that's true. At at minimum, the first one was integral, and since that's like the main important one for the book, uh, I think we can call it that for this trauma generally. Though I I do see your point about the second incident. Then was the trauma treated with care? The murder? Yeah, I. There's a <laughs> bunch of narrative layers. We're years away from the incident, and there's barely any detail. And it's also a very, like, hyper specific to the characters. It's not a thing that people are just going to, like, experience. Yeah. And and also the character who would have been most hurt by relaying this information to the main character so that the audience can know about it is not there. Isn't anywhere near the reveal. Yeah. The body horror, um, no and deliberately so. <laughs> 
this is supposed to be it's terrible. It's supposed to be gross and yeah. sc- and scarring and weird and bad. It, it's supposed to feel pretty terrible to read this chapter um, or this part of the chapter, I think. Um, yeah, no care. Definitely purposefully so. Um, the medical trauma. Um, I think that Maybe like was a lot treated, of care. Yeah, yeah a, a lot of care. Um, especially with focusing on what like the the emotional experience of this right. event and also what she decides to do as a result of it because it, it means that it focuses on her reactions and her agency rather than lingering on mm-hmm. the details of what happened to her body um i think that's important because it, it keeps her it keeps her in focus. In, in focus and not having things done to her other than the actual injury. She's right. like very much other than the injuries themselves. Everything that our other like main cast does is based on helping her keep her agency and also make her own decisions. The only, the only exception to that is that uh, we don't explicitly, we're not explicitly told, and I think we are even explicitly not told, no, that she does not consent to like certain cybernetic upgrades where the choice was lose this forever or get upgraded. There's no like middle ground there. Mm-hmm. Um, she is told after the fact that they like gave her these. Um, yeah. But literally, literally everything else is like explicitly based on helping her keep her agency and also recover as best she wants to yeah so i I think maybe like enough because the 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 implants kind of maybe kicks it over to enough instead of just yes for me yeah i i think it is enough and not a straight up yes because i yeah i i think i think there is an enormous amount of care but there's also there's certain amounts of detail that are necessary in order to have a certain impact. Right. Yeah. Purposeful, but um not straight up care. Um Okay, how clear is the moral directionality? Um I think it's pretty clear, honestly. Yeah. Because the there's there, are, there there could be a theoretical argument for Muddy. However, I think that we as an audience are very clearly told no. The other people who are opposing this concept are the problem. Like that is in a very clear right. message. The people who want to argue that it's Muddy also want you to stop thinking about it and just let right. them handle it exactly, the way they've exactly. always been handling it. <laughs> it's like, don't don't worry your pretty little head about it. Uh, we got you. Sure, you can't uh, date a superhero without getting kidnapped every other week. But, like, this system is fine and completely not broken. <laughs> no, that line actually cracked me up because... Uh, explicitly that you the villains will kidnap you because they're they're the ones who are willing to do this. It's explicitly that. So it's the one it's one area where no, actually, that's not the hero's fault. But it is a very funny line delivered. Very funny. Very well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and I I do not want to spoil the uh, the corollary of why the villains don't have their loved ones kidnapped every other week. Um, it's a just a really, really good scene. Do not want to spoil. It's yeah, excellent. It's very good. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, this is it's pretty clear. It's an everything sucks kind of clear, but it's definitely clear. <laughs> yeah. Point of view for the trauma and Anna. aftermath. Um Always. so it's Anna the whole time. Uh she is not the one who was murdered. No, and... she is explicitly our 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 narrator, our narrator actually. Yeah. Um So, she is, yeah, so she is specifically the narrator, and the murder happened a very long time ago, so she is not the, she's not really the trauma or the aftermath for that one. Mm, Yeah. I mean, she is our, she is our witness, though. Yes. Yeah, no, she is, she gets the information 
about what happened. Right. So she's the only one that we we have anything on. Yes, for anything. Um, I just like the body horror. She's not the one being contorted. Um, she is not having a great time witnessing this, but it's it's a more complicated situation. Uh, and then the medical trauma is it is what happened to her specifically. Right. All right, for the trope spotter, we have blessed with suck, which is where you have a power or an ability and it just it's not great. Like it and if it's uh strong, that's worse. <laughs> um and in this case, there is a character who has super senses mm. and it means that she is working through smoking and other things to dull her senses as much as she can to be able to have living be more bearable and to not have to constantly surround herself with lavender as the only smell she can stand. I thought that was very interesting because like I I'm sensitive to certain kinds of smells i have a close relative who's very very sensitive to smells and yeah lavender is fine it's like it i i thought that was interesting that this is a slightly more universal experience than i was aware of you know weirdly enough i'm not specifically like sensitive to specific smells i'm just i have a very very good sense of smells things that are very strong or too much lavender is cloying (laughs) yeah La- uh. lavender is the one lavender is one of the ones that like it feels like i've shoved something up my nose to be clear to be clear i also have like a probably synesthesia where i i i get physical sensations for smell and sound um, yeah and so lavender feels just like like it's stuffing up my nose and it's just uncomfy yeah, that's definitely the synesthesia. That's not gonna. That's not gonna be helped a ton by switching the smell. <laughs> to be fair, I blame lavender, not. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. Um, but yeah, so that's uh, blessed with suck, where uh, you have a power. <laughs> congrats. Um, it it's not fun. Uh, yeah. Uh, what was your favorite non traumatic thing about the book? Oh, man, I am a huge fan of her cane and just the mental image I get of her walking with the cane. (laughs) Mm hmm. Like, I mean, the the cane is trauma adjacent, but also the cane is cool. Yeah. Also, I feel like I feel like a cane is one of those things where it's like sometimes I'm like. I, I have no mobility aids at all, and most of the time i don't need them but there's sometimes where i'm like you know i really probably shouldn't be walking right now huh (laughs) and there have been times where i'm like what if i got a cane and then i'm like my shoulder is not going to be okay with that and so like there's like a there's like a mental image i have where i'm like canes are cool no (laughs) i could not do that yeah but i i like the image i get we get of her like walking with the cane let's see uh i i i like um, there's a bit where they, there's a bit where we're running through a bunch of people's kind of bios pretty quickly as mm-hmm. the team, uh, makes their lives worse. <laughs> <laughs> and as much as it, the scene did involve some misogyny, but I, I enjoyed the meeting with the twins. Just. Because I, I love uh, banter and conversations and just the the way that she is in that situation. Because I, I really like it when I like scenes where someone who isn't the point of view character often like has some particular expectations about who the person is that they're talking to. And right. they think they're way less important than they are. And then it turns out, no, that's not the secretary. That's the person who's here to interview you that, like, that you have been not great to just right now. And you probably shouldn't have done that. I I like, I like scenes that twist the assumed power dynamics in those ways. Right. And that, that had this, which was, which was fun. 
So yeah, uh, thank you so much for joining us. And we will catch you later for another episode. All music used in this podcast was created by Nicole as Heartbeat Art Co. and is used with permission. Our transcriptionist is Heather. You can find her on Twitter at MamaDragon20 or on TikTok at MamaDragons underscore Den. We're proud members of the Certain Point of View network of podcasts. Check out all the Certain POV shows at www.certainpov.com. Please consider supporting us on Patreon at patreon.com slash books that burn. If you can't wait for the next episode and need even more book related content in your life, check out our book review blog reviews that burn subscribe to the fortnightly newsletter or follow us on the story graph you can contact us by email at books that burn at yahoo.com and find all our links contact info and social media on our card books that burn dot c-a-r-r-d dot c-o don't forget to subscribe to us wherever you get your podcasts and remember some books burn you